Hey there, today I'm going to show you how to make a little socket IO app or kind of how socket IO works. It may seem intimidating, but it's actually very easy. I'm going to show you a demo of how I did this little uh, app here. Basically, it takes your device orientation and broadcasts it out to a bunch of different computers that are connected to this page. So when I run the server, which I'm just going to do now, you'll see it start to run. I'm just going to refresh this page so you can see what happens when it connects. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So I have this little logger div here, which basically just tells me when it connects. It's one of the events that Socket.io broadcasts for everyone to listen to. And it's important because it obviously won't work if it's not connected. So you can see when Socket actually connects, when this client actually connects to Socket.io, it returns an event called connected or connection or connect or whatever it's called. It'll run a function on connect which is what it just did here to change this to green and to change the text to connected. So what this little app does is I can turn my device into a controller to control everyone else's little box. So I'm going to turn this on here in this window. This is an incognito window, so it's considered a new client on this page. So I'm moving my, my MacBook, and because I have a device orientation on my MacBook, it lets me basically broadcast it like this. Uh, basically, uh, this becomes a little controller that can control something on someone else's screen. I'm going to show you how it's done. So here's Cloud9. I just have a little simple Express app. Everything about this is basic Express except this little line here that includes uh, Socket.io and then listens on my server. And this function here, which is my, the, this whole thing runs my entire app, basically. I'm looking for a connection. So a connection is basically when it's connected. It, it can't run unless it's connected. It's a, it's a server, right? So I'm, this is one of the events that Socket.io has. So on connection, just like on click, on mouse over, on you know orientation change or something like that. On connection, I want to run this function. I want to start my app. So I've created my own custom event called device move. So this is a this is a event that's going to be broadcast by the client. Client the client's going to broadcast something called device move. And then when it when the server hears this or when the server captures this event, it's going to broadcast out a new event called move square. So because I have this broadcast flag, it's going to broadcast to everyone but me, everyone but myself. So I could actually do a a function like this and emit move square to myself. So this little line here would emit it to myself also, but because I just want to, I'm going to handle that on the client side. I'm handling the moving on the client side and I'm just, it just visually looks like it. I'm not actually grabbing stuff when I'm not the controller. So I just want to broadcast it to everyone else because uh, it's going to be a less load on the server if I just let everyone else get my info and then do it that way. So here's the client file. So in order to use Socket.io on the client side, you're going to need to make sure you include the Socket JavaScript. So this is something that it creates. It creates a, a JavaScript file for you to use. You can actually inspect this in uh, the Chrome Inspector and see what it actually looks like. And here it is right here. It's a big, crazy JavaScript file. So it, it's being injected on your server. It's being created there. You're not actually going to find it unless it's running. So then I just have this little client file. This is all in my footer, so it runs at the end of my document. And I'm just going to grab the socket object. Logger is the little div that has my text inside of it that lets me know when it's connected. Move box is the function that will move my little div around the screen. So all it's doing is adding a transform to it of a rotate X and rotate Y. And data is the stuff that's being broadcast. So data is, I'm, I'm making a little object and I'm storing my device orientation stuff in there in the X and the Z and the O. So here's what's actually making my, my, my client side actually work. This connect, it's another event that's, that's uh, you know, reserved. So I'm listening for this connect. When it connects, run this function. So you notice when I refreshed and when it finally connect, it, it ran these little two things and let, let the client know that it was connected by turning it green and changing the text, right? So when it's connect, 
the opposite of connect is disconnect, right? So when it disconnects, it changes it to red, which is what happens when you either refresh or the server uh, stops for some reason. Now this is the actual, this is another custom event that I made, this move square. So remember in, in my app, I'm actually broadcasting a move square event. So in here, I'm listening for move square events. So when I get a move square event, I'm going to run a function. It has one argument, data. That's what's being passed through. It's just, it's just passing it all through here. And data is a little object of x and y and z values. So move box. This is what actually moves the box when someone else is the controller. It just basically runs this function like if someone else was you know, controlling my computer. So now I have a little function just that will capture the orientation change. This is just a, a basic you know, device orientation capture. I'm checking to see if device orientation exists. If this was a computer that didn't have um, device orientation or a uh, gyroscope or whatever inside of it, it would, this would just be false. And now I'm listening for this orientation change event. So when someone moves their device, this is going to fire. It's going to look. It's going to grab it. It's going to store all of the different um, orientations and run a function as well. So just like a function that's locally to my client, it's the same sort of deal with socket. So this is the function that I'm list that I'm going to be running once I move my phone or move my computer. It, this is the data object that I'm moving around to all the different different uh, clients. I'm capturing. I'm just basically converting these into smaller numbers or more round numbers because the device orientation is like one point. Blah blah blah. blah. It's a huge string, and now it's going to be an actual like good px value for or degree value for in here. So then this is the checkbox. So when the checkbox is checked, that means that you're the controller, which means that you are going to be broadcasting a event. You are going to be broadcasting your device orientation. So that's what this device move is. Remember, we're listening for this device move in our app. This is what we're listening for. Hey, when this happens, when I hear this, let everyone tell everyone to do this. So when my computer moves, it, it uh, goes through this event. Oh, oh, am I the controller? Yes, I am. Show out the show everyone the or sorry tell the server to do this and this is my this is me moving it locally so I'm not listening for two events so that's why I was saying in here that's why this is broadcast if this was just a regular emit um, like that I would see it but no one else would so that's why it needs to be broadcast because I'm showing everyone else and I put this here so that I can see my my changes too. Before, if I didn't have that, I would turn this controller on and it would just sit there. But the other guy listening would be moving. So I need to have that move box there, at least for, for me, to see what's happening, uh, how it's going to look. So that's just an aesthetics thing. So it's pretty simple. It's, it's a few, really all you need is this little function here looking for an event and this little function here broadcasting an event. So I'm actually going to grab my iPhone now, and uh, I'm going to do I'm going to use it to control these other two windows. So yeah, I'll leave that on there. So it's connected. It's on there. I'm just going to refresh so you can see. Uh, my iPhone just connected, so I'm going to turn that on. So see, my guy on the left is moving because it's connected. Once the guy on the right move right connects, he's going to start getting that data. There we go. So see, none of these are set to controller, but they're still getting the the um, the uh, data because my phone is is the controller. So if I turn the controller off on my phone, it'll boot, it'll stop, and then I'll turn the controller on here, and my phone is actually getting. You can't see it, but trust me, it's it's moving. So that's the basics of a uh, socket I/O app.